Okay. So um, I'm going to just kind of start this thing off and, and introduce uh, Flat Earth Dave to the show. I mean, uh, kind of no introductions needed. It's right there in the title. Uh, we're going to have the conversation finally about, is it, is it globe? Is it pear-shaped? Is it flat? Is it snow globe? What is it? And we're going to go through the arguments. I mean, this is what I did. I tried to debunk it. I tried to debate it. I got tired of people leaving it in my comments. This is, you know, flat, flat, flat. Thought it was ridiculous. And then I looked into it. So, um, Dave, I want to, first of all, thank you for taking the time to be on the show. I want to um, salute your courage because you're out there taking a lot of arrows for everybody in terms of like, you, you don't get anything out of this. I know a lot of people think that this is just some sort of a a fun thing to do that you just want to wake up one day and be insulted by the whole world, but it's not, it's like a, a journey for truth. So uh, I'm jumping in. I'm going to dive into this with you tonight. We're going to go through everything. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hey, thanks. And you're telling the same story that every flat earther has. We laughed at it. It's dumb. We're not going to look into it. Then we looked into it, trying to debunk it. And here we are going, Oh my God, you know, what, what's going on here? And when you said uh, the earth is in, you know, triangle, square, a ball, whatever, um, flat is not a shape. It's not. It's a description of horizontal and level, okay? Uh, you know, because the earth is sure. clearly not flat. There's mountains, there's hills, there's rolling, you know, hills, but large bodies of water at rest lay flat, okay? And so our earth is flat because it's horizontal and level, and it doesn't move. Sure. Right. I, and, I agree and, with that. And wait, just last thing, because you said that your audience might be having a hard time here. Um, you are going to gain more listeners than you're going to lose. But for those of you ready to tune out right now, if you think it's that dumb, I'm offering three Bitcoins for one proof of the globe. Okay? Three Bitcoins for just one proof. If you think I'm crazy, if you think the host here is crazy, then just provide one proof of the globe and um, you win three Bitcoins. Pretty easy. I, I want to add that there's a reason that I'm going into this. It's it's more important than just the question of the shape. There's a spiritual implication. There are implications as to who we can trust, what institutions are lying to us. We're going to go into NASA, I'm sure. sure. Um, and, and sure. you know, this is a topic that has a lot of people emotionally charged. So I'm asking people, you know, if you're interested in, in figuring out both sides, if you're interested in, in being intellectually honest, put aside the ego, put aside the uh, the emotion or the rage if necessary. Yeah. Because uh, one of the first yeah. lies they tell us in every classroom is a, a ball on every desk. So, uh, you know, I've got some notes. I'm definitely going to ask questions as we go. I hope you don't mind. But I'm going to let you lead the way because you've woken more people up to this truth than, you know, than I have. I'm new to this world. Right. Um, just real quick. This is the people that are around me that have my app. These are the flat earthers around me. If I click on the bottom left here and just show you a worldview real quick. If people think that flat earth is uh, a, a niche little thing, these are the flat earthers here in the United States, all right? These are, and this isn't all of them. This is a small fraction of them that happen to have my app, right? Here's the UK. We're not kidding. This is growing. This is the biggest movement ever. And people used to say to me, you know, a few years ago, oh, no, they say to flat earthers, the insult was that the anti-flat earthers come up with, oh, good luck getting a job. Well, I'm going to flip it back over. Good luck ballers getting a job because flat earthers are going to take over and we don't hire ballers and we don't work for ballers. OK, we only uh, we only want to be around like minded people. So here's your opportunity. This is your red pill moment. Listen to this show. Open your mind. Don't let your brain fall out and verify everything that I say. And then you, too, will end up in the same boat that we're in. But that boat's on flat water. And, and, and my audience knows I have a reputation for logic and discernment. So, you know, we're going to go through the, the logical arguments here to convince people. I'm also going to talk about some of the scriptural stuff, because it turns out like the Bible kind of nailed the shape argument long before modern scientists. Absolutely. It's a uh, all, of, all of the all of the mythologies, in fact, had sort of the same worldview, uh, basically a flat plane with a bubble on top. So we'll, we'll talk about all that. Um, do you want to start maybe with the history of, of, of flat earth, what they're calling flat earth now? I think well, that that whole term is, is loaded, of course. Yeah, it, it is loaded, just like um, conspiracy theorists, right? I'm a, a, a conspiracy analyst, all right? And that's what, that's what we all should be. So when we're told that flat earth is uh, 2,000 years old, we figured it out, Aristophanes, 
with his sticks and shadows. That's not true. Everyone knew the earth was flat. When did it change? It changed in the mid, ready? 1900s, mid 1900s. In the early 1900s, they were teaching flat earth exclusively in schools. I interviewed a woman named Ruth um, in February, 2020. She was 102 and she was taught flat earth in public school here in Connecticut, All right? And yeah. I, I met somebody recently uh, that said in the 1950s and early 60s, they were teaching both flat earth and globe earth in public school here in America, right? Then the Rockefellers came in, they pulled all the flat earth stuff out, like it didn't even exist. Globe is the way. NASA went to the moon, right? They took a picture. It happened to look just like a universal picture spinning globe that they had. Remember the universal pictures, the old one? It spun, but they had the airplane yeah. flying around it, not like that level with the, with the ball, right? So, so you got your spinning ball and the airplane's going around like this, right? If you look at the old films, yeah. you, know, you know why they did it like that? Because if they had it going like this, everyone would have said, no way. That's so stupid, right? And so they started yeah. out like this. And that way people's minds didn't flip out. And that was strategically done. You so, know, it's been like a Hollywood movie scene since the beginning with NASA and most of the evidence that we have in favor of space. It's all one big movie set, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers said it, you know, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Um, just yeah, real quick, for those of you that don't know, yeah. this is Antarctica. This is what they tell us. They tell us it's the highest land on earth. Interesting. I always found that interesting. Maybe that's why it's at the bottom because it's heavy, you know, and the ball swings under, which is ridiculous. Um, in reality, Antarctica is the land that surrounds our pond, right? Large bodies of water need a container. That container has to be higher than the, than the water level all the way around. If you had a, hot, a, a tub of water, and part of the tub was lower than the top of the water, well, the water's gonna go away. This is the container of our water. It's the highest land on earth. Antarctica could be bigger than all of the continents combined. Yeah. Right? I tell people right. it's been what circumnavigated by boat twice and they went like 60 something thousand versus their usual 10,000 kilometers that they tell us it is or miles, I, yeah. I forget. Captain Cook did it um, and it, he went 60, over 60,000 miles. It took three and a half years because he's not going around a little island continent at the bottom. He's going all the way around the world, right? The equator, they tell us, is 24,000 miles. I think it's closer to 21, but um, they're lying about everything. So is this the flat earth map, the accurate flat earth map? There's questions. There's lots of questions. The globe is far less accurate than this, but this actually has... Um, a, a very strong truth to it. If you look here, this is, a, this, is, this is the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. But if you look at the sun, the sun goes around. So now if I call my buddy PK over in Sydney right now, I'd say, where's the sun? He'd, go, he'd be like, it's, right, it's noon here and it's right over me, right? And then a couple hours later, I, when it's here, call somebody in that, on, the east, on the west side of Australia, they would say, sun's over me, it's noon. Wherever the sun is, it's noon. And here's the funny thing. Okay. Only at noon can you see the sun where it actually is. Because as it moves yeah. through your personal yeah. atmospheric dome, it moves. It moves. You see it in a spot relative to your own position. Well, you can tell with the sun's rays kind of bursting between the clouds going like three, four different directions. It's obviously a lot closer than they're telling us or something's going on there. Is that... Um... Those maps, it's the USGS map or something, right? Yes. As um, I was going to ask you about that one. Well, that's, that's what they that's, use. That's the UN map. Um, you know, and you talk about crepuscular rays. Look, you know, do your geometry. Where is this light source? Right? Where exactly. where, where is the light source? Where is the light source? Um, and so the question is, you know, what what is the the map? Here, um, here are the 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 four big agencies that run the world. And they're all using the flat earth map, right? And they're hiding Antarctica. What's out here? What's yeah. in the outer space, right? Yeah, the, the language of symbols. Yeah. That's and, all over the elites, everything. Right. And if you, if you jump forward, you know, um, through this conversation, after we get by, you know, ships going over the horizon, sticks and shadows, day and night, seasons, after I 
explain what you've been hidden from. And then all of a sudden you get it. People are going to throw their hands up and go, you know, why the lie? Why, why, why would they lie? Right? Why the lie? Why such an elaborate lie? And it's about controlling your mind. It's about hiding resources. It's about hiding more land. What if there's more land out here in the outer space? More extra land territory, extra territory, extra terrestrials come from the extra territory in the outer space. Right here. Yeah, the animal Earth. bird stuff. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've learned bird, a, a lot about that. Like, yeah, he didn't even get that far. He only got out here a little bit, you know, or wherever he, he he's still on Antarctica. He but didn't go. He, he claimed that he was seeing like lush greenery, animal wildlife, you know, uh, is something that would sustain populations, massive resources, coal, mountains of coal. A hundred percent. And, and uh, the team that came in from the West, they said they found warmer lands. That's weird. What's going on there? So we don't know what's going on in Antarctica because it's off limits. It's absolutely off limits. The Antarctic Treaty says uh, nobody can go there until the year 2041, okay? And, and by the time that comes around, it'll be, uh, it'll be kicked down the road another 60 years, right? That's, uh, sure. that, that's the longest treaty ever, right? In 1959, they, oh my God, we discovered more land. Nobody's there. We can, resources for the takings. Oh no, all, every country in the world all of a sudden agrees. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can't go there. It's still in place, longest lasting treaty ever, but we can go deforest the Amazon, we can start wars, we can do whatever we want, but we can't go to the one place where there's no plants, no animals, no people, and tons of resources laying there, okay? Because we have to protect yeah. it. Ridiculous. This, this infographic that you're sharing is uh, it's one of the ones that really woke, it, woke me up. I mean, the Antarctic stuff I was already looking into, like obviously they were doing some secret space stuff and there was technology and there was secrecy and there, you know, John Kerry's flying down to Antarctica for some reason. On election day. And then I realized like what they were hiding down there, um, okay. you know, the, the firmament, the discovery of all of this. I mean, I don't know about Admiral Byrd's claims to have met giants, but I mean, they're definitely doing some stuff down there. They were trying to nuke the firmament at one point. That's uh, you've got that Operation Fishbowl on there, like yeah. It, it, no, wait, and then the moon land. Yeah, yeah. So let let's just back up the Operation Fishbowl. They were trying to blow a hole in the firmament, but they weren't using nukes. You know why? You're not. You're not. You're not you're, you you haven't let go of the top of the rabbit hole. Let it go and let yourself fall in because you're never coming out. Ready? Well, I know, this, I know they were trying to blow it up. This is going to trigger everybody more than flat earth because you're emotionally holding on to this fear. And I'm going to remove it from you if you take the time to think and then follow the research link I'm going to give you. Nuclear bombs do not exist. They are a made up story. And the immediate thing that comes to your head is what about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Okay, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were TNT explosions. There's video of them stacking the TNT there before the blast. Three days later, after the blast, the trains were running, the flower shops were open, the sandwich shops were open, people were back to work, and only one reporter was allowed to take photos and write articles, and if anybody else tried, they went to jail. Okay? This is all- I'm not a, surprised. All a made up story. Yeah. Then, people, then people will jump, oh, what about nuclear power? You don't believe in nuclear power? Nuclear power is using plutonium to boil water. Cool. That's a chemical process to boil water, to make steam, to turn a steam engine. It's a friggin' steam engine. That's all it is, all right? And, and nuclear waste is not dangerous, right? Here, what about Chernobyl? I'm, I'm not shocked. What about Chernobyl you know? and, 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 and um, um, Fukushima? Plants, people, and animals thrive and still live there in all of those locations. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Now, where now I'm just as crazy flat earth telling you this on the internet. I don't know. Are you a, a subscriber to Crow Triple Seven Radio? Um, I know him. I don't yeah. watch him. You, you should be. This is the most well researched podcast ever. It's Crow with two R's, C R R O W 777 radio.com. Go to episode 053. Okay. And it's a two, it's two hour episode. If you listen to that, your entire world will change. It literally, it will change your DNA because now whenever you hear a newscaster or especially a politician 
say anything where they say nuke threat, you will immediately laugh inside and go, oh, this guy's a clown. He's an actor. And everything he just said is complete and total nonsense. Right? Imagine, I believe it. I yeah, it's not about believing. No. You believe it because I told you. You need to go here and see the research. Like, where do I live? Did I tell you where I live? I don't think so. All right. Well, normally I tell people I live in Connecticut. And then I ask them, where do I live? They go in Connecticut. I go, is that a belief or is that a, a, a knowing? And you're like, well, I guess it's a belief, right? Because we want to see believe. a lot about this topic. Yeah. yeah. So Crow, two hours, triple seven radio, episode 053. Listen to it and listen to all this stuff. This is life changing information. Here's the thing. In the future, I'm going to be hiring a lot of people. And if Harvard graduates, any school graduates, straight A, summa cum laude, or someone who goes, I took four years off and I listened to all the Crow episodes. I'm hiring that guy because that guy knows what's going on, right? You want college for your kids? If you're worried about college, $8 a month, okay? $8 a month, the best college education you ever get. There you go. There's my plug for Crow. No, I get nothing from it other than smarter people living on this realm with me. He's a smart guy. He's, he's definitely sometimes I feel like taking the pessimistic pill, but I understand why. Um, yeah. I've had him on the show before and, and he is definitely a brilliant researcher. Yeah. You know, I'm not shocked by pretty much anything these days. I think a lot of my audience are going to be surprised by the nuclear thing. You know, I buy it. I, I, I am not a nuclear physicist, but I have seen a lot to make me doubt the people that created the nukes and pushed the nukes. And a lot of them are pushing the same sort of uh, NASA science that we are about to debunk anyway. So it's all the same. It's all the same group yeah. of people doing the same nonsense. They want you to be insignificant, floating in a godless or distant god crazy universe where an asteroid can take you out we're running out of water we're running out of food we're running out of land you know all of that is nonsense yeah. all of it you know the 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 infographic that you have there I, I i've been building on that for my research and you know in 1908 right before that high jump before the government ever went there there was a nimrod expedition named after the ancient deity nimrod that went there with i think it was uh, shackleton and they knew something. I mean, they went there on a boat called Nimrod to, to the Nimrod expedition. It's still like on Google uh, Maps. If you look it up, there's a camp there. And, and it, it kind of leads back to the NASA connection to the Freemasons and the secret society stuff. But we could kind of go through the arguments first and dive into that later if we have time. Um, yeah. It's, so just speaking of ancient um, gods and stuff, do you know who this guy is? Yeah, Atlas. Atlas. And what's he holding up? The sphere. The globe. Well, if we lived on a globe, if we, if we lived on a globe, what is going on here? Let's see if this works. Um, if we lived on a globe, what would he be standing on? Okay. It makes no sense. It was changed. He's holding up the sky. He's holding up the firmament, right? Atlas is not holding a globe that was changed somewhere probably in the, in the mid 19, the late 1900s, right? And they, they, they put a globe in there, right? And in, the, in the Egypt, they have their God holding up the same thing, holding up the firmament, the, you know, the God with the stars, right? This is the dome of the earth. And they're telling us it's holding up a globe. Think about it. If you're holding up a globe, what are you standing on? Sure. What are you standing on? Yeah. Okay. It's that simple. Well, I, I, you know, I think the ancient religions pretty much all were in agreement on the shape. It's, it's the modern uh, scientific atheist crowd that thinks that science is a hammer against creationism, and it's not the hammer they thought it was. Well, they, they don't use science. We're, flat earthers are not science deniers. We love science. The scientific method is how we figured out the earth is not a spinning ball in an impossible deep, deep space. science. Well, it, uh, I call, I call it, it the religion of science. It's a religious cult we call scientism. Okay, it is sure. it's a cult because you know there is zero proof of the globe. Oh, come on! There's millions of proofs of the globe. There's zero. Now, there's some things that work yeah. on both, like circumnavigation east and west, that works perfectly on both. Well, it doesn't work perfectly on a globe, actually. But southern circumnavigation, south coming back to the north, does not work on a flat Earth at all. It would actually prove that the earth is a globe, but no one's ever done it. Weird. Yeah, right? well, I think it was faked once, but then you know, it came out that it was oh. like they didn't actually do the course. So, I mean, that's yeah. usually one of those Freemason injections over history. Right. 
And if people don't understand how circumnavigation works, on the flat earth, we have a magnetic center. So here's my boat, which is a compass, and that needle is pointing towards the north. Now I'm trying to push it west. Well, notice what I have to do. I have to keep turning to the north to maintain my heading of 290 degrees west, right? I'm heading west. Now on a big ocean, I wouldn't even know that I'm turning. I'm just maintaining my compass heading. Like if you were on a track, now I'm heading east, 90 degrees, I got to keep turning. If you were on a track that was 200 miles in a circle, you would think you were driving in a straight line. You wouldn't even know the slight turn that you're taking, okay? Sure. Now, if I try to dead wreck in west, as soon as I start moving, if I don't correct to the north, I'm heading south. Bam, I'm heading south. How'd that happen? I started off west. I didn't turn the wheel. Now I'm heading south. South is every direction away from the center, okay? Now, on a globe yeah. in the south, you would have to correct to the south. You would have to correct to the south but we have testimony from ship's captains um, trying to dead reckon in the south, uh, 90 or 270. They have to correct to the north. Now, look, heading south, yeah. I should magically pop up over here if the earth is a globe, but no one's ever done it. I'm heading north. I'm heading north. I'm heading north. And now I'm heading south. The compass just did a 180, and I'm still going in a straight line. Every direction is south. That's south. That's south. That's south. South is every direction. Now you may be heading done, north like, for a little bit, but you're, as soon as you pass the North Pole, you're heading south. I've done dozens of hours of research on ancient maps, and you're—I mean—they had problems that were not solved except by flat, you know, map charters. And then they also have modern problems with like the planes connecting from different stops that don't quite make sense on a globe. Let me ask you a question. So you got your globe here, and let's say this is the equator is right here. If you're going from any northern location to any other northern location, would that plane ever need to dip below the, 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 the equator? Think about it. Not east-west. No, 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 no. From any- I mean, if you're on a globe, absolutely. No, no, no. On a globe, think, just think. On a globe, um, on a globe, you have east and you have, um, what am I saying? Oh, if you're going from any northern location, which is above the equator, to any other northern location, northern location, would you ever need to go below the equator to get there? Oh, no. Okay, of course not. And guess what? No plane ever does. Any plane from yeah. any, any combination of any two locations in the, in the north um, never goes below the equator. So that's, that's interesting. How about a southern location to another southern location? Would it ever need to go above the equator to get from one to the other? Uh, I think you would have to in the real world because it's well, flat and they're not. Really well, but I'm saying on, on a globe, yeah. you wouldn't have to, just like you don't have to in the north. In the real world, all mm -hmm. northern flights to northern locations never cross the equator. Okay, that works on a flat earth and it works on a globe earth. Yeah. Is that true of southern though? In no, it's south, not true. South, in the south, 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 in the south, we look at the at, at um at trips, they go all the way up here, yeah, and then all the way back down crossing the equator twice. But if you look, here's the location, right? And, and so let's look at another one. Um, yeah, yeah. They go South all, never seems to follow a straight line. Yeah, they go all the way up here and then all the way back down. Why didn't they just cut across? Okay, because this is the path that they're taking. They're stopping in California for um, fuel. You know, they're, well, they're picking up other passengers. Nonsense, these are full planes, yeah. okay? Again, why do they go all the way up here again and back down when they could have just cut across here? And they go, well, they have to be close to an airport. Well, what airport is out here in the middle of the ocean? Okay, right? I, this, I have a hard time with this one with pilots. Well, what, what do you mean have a hard time? With this, with this argument with pilots when it comes to explaining how these, like the, the north-south of the equator issue that you just did beautifully, like they never leave the northern part of the world in the in the globe model when they're when they're going north to north like you just said yeah because pilots will try to debunk you they're the first ones they try but a lot of them are getting it because guess what the the amount of um flat plane awareness out there is reaching that that saturation point where people are just you know they're getting it we're all connected to each other they're trying to keep us disconnected they know that when we come together that they lose that's why they're keeping us separate <laughs> They're doing all this crazy stuff, but um, it's out there. Again, this one, crazy. Look at it. It's a friggin' straight line.
bam. And then the, the, the kicker for me is the emergency landings. I'm sure you've seen some of those. Um, yes. The, the emergency landings are unbelievable. There was an emergency right about here. They went 1,000 miles out of the way to Moscow to land. Why did they do that? Because Moscow is right there in reality, right? They were flying, and then they land, and if it landed. And then if you look at the data on these, on these landings, they didn't have time to go to Moscow. They landed like, how did they get to Moscow so fast? All right. And again, another one, another one is um, from uh, Dallas to, to Beijing. They stopped in Calgary. Calgary is all the way up here. That's a huge distance. Why didn't they just land in California or somewhere? And the answer is Calgary is right there, right? This has happened um, 16, well, more than 16 times, but um, these have, there's 16 that's documented in a book. Again, they love going to Moscow. Why? Well, Moscow's got a great hospital and airport. How did they get there? Isn't that like another two or three hour flight to get there, right? It's right on the line, right on the line. Every single time, it's right on the line. And now if you're like, well, if you think I'm wrong, you can get this book online. It's free. 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. It's a free PDF, or you can order it online at lulu.com. It's a great coffee table book because anytime anybody touches it, they become a flat earther. Just by touching it. You don't even have to open it. You just touch it. That's funny. Bam, you're a flat That's earther. Funny. So um, I mean, you have your own presentation. I'm sure you have your own flow. At some point, I want to bash on NASA too. Let's go. I have no presentation. I'm here to answer questions. Okay. I, if you ask me to do so, a presentation, I don't know where to go. You know, we, 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 we've already said a lot of stuff, so hopefully nobody's dropped off. I mean, nuclear is something that, you know, I still need to do research, but I absolutely believe that it's, it probably is bogus based off of what we're about to go through. Some of these, uh, I call it deep state scientists, uh, science, you call it scientism. But, you know, basically actors pretending at science to convince us of a lie that has a purpose, I would argue. But, you know, um, here's here's a, a, a image I've got in my research files. It was 1967. Uh, Gus Grissom held an unauthorized press conference in which he told reporters that the U.S. was at least a decade away from even contemplating a lunar mission. He was rebuked for this. Um, following the reprimand, he hung a lemon attached to a coat hanger in front of a NASA emblem on camera to um, indicate that it was all a joke to him, this Apollo program. And then uh, uh, five days later, he was killed uh, on the launch pad. Um, just kind of suspicious stuff where they, they kind of out themselves. Uh, you know, NASA um, admits that by the late 60s, their technology was so good. And this is from their own... Um, Flight director Gene Kranz, in the light in the late 1960s, our simulation technology had progressed to the point where it became virtually impossible to separate the training from actual missions. Right. The simulations became full dress right. rehearsals for the missions, down to the smallest detail. The simulation tested out the crew's and controllers' responses to normal and emergency conditions. Basically, they couldn't even tell the difference. Um, he said the simulations were so real that no controller could discern the difference between training and the real mission. So we've been doing this all like the uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper said from a Hollywood basement for a long time. And that's where science is coming from now. And I would say that that's evolution, a lot of other areas as well that they're throwing at us. Um, right. It's all what I, you look, know, deep state look, science, science is fake. Look, look at these three guys. They just did the most incredible thing ever. They're at a press conference. They went to the moon, they played golf, they rode, rode on a dune buggy and yeah. they're, they're here. And you can tell they're being forced to lie. Okay, I don't know the situation, how they were forced, if they agreed to it, if they're not, if they're blackmailed, whatever. But they couldn't even, they can't even get their story right. If you watch this old conference, you'd be like, what the heck it's is painful. going on? Yeah, super painful. Super painful. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, I saw one, uh, it was like astronauts gone wild, where they were confronted and caught in the lies later like his older guys and they were, they were all violent. They all like beat up the camera guy and the reporter and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, um, interesting. They wouldn't swear on the Bible that they walked on the moon, you know, because these yeah. guys, um, they know about breaking free will. They know about um, deception and, and karma and they, they just will not swear on the Bible because they, they, they're Bible believers and they know they don't want to lie on the Bible. And, well, they're Freemasons and they, they yeah. take the opposite view, I think. 
they're Satanists. I, uh, but from, from people that, that take the mainstream scientific position and, and think flat earth is crazy, whatever geocentricity is a whole nother topic, but you know, a lot of mainstream scientists, like, um, I, I'm going to mess up his name, but Michio Kaku, Michio Kaku they're out there right. putting out videos like the, the principal and they're, they're disputing that, you know, at least maybe it's a globe, but they're calling it still the center of the universe. It's not heliocentric, it's geocentric again. And even that in the mainstream conversation is happening, just like evolution is sort of phasing out and they're coming in with panspermia to explain things. We're right back to square one where they're just admitting they have no idea what they're talking about. They, um, I think it was Michio Kaku that said that the astro, um, astrophysicist, um, you know, they say normally if, a science, if something's off by a factor of 10, you know, it's considered horrible. He goes, but cosmology is off by a factor of 10 yeah. to the 200th power, or 120, 120, not 200. 120. 120 zeros, yeah. okay? Do you know what doesn't exist? 10 to the 120 zeros, okay? There's not that many particles of sand in the entire heliocentric universe, yeah. okay? The number is so insane that you can't fathom it, right? A trillion has nine zeros, right? Uh, 100,000, million, billion, 12, 12 zeros, okay? 12 zeros, not 120, 12. Is it? I think that's right, either way. Um, a trillion seconds, do you know how long a trillion seconds is? I do not. Take a guess, a trillion seconds. I, I went to public school, I don't math good. I, I, mean, I know, I know but, you, but you, were, you weren't taught big numbers. How long in time is a trillion seconds? And don't say a trillion seconds. Guess it in uh, weeks. Uh, if you guess I'm, it in- I'm going to guess in, it's, it's hundreds of weeks at least. Hun hundreds of weeks. Very close. It's 31,000 years. Okay? <laughs> One trillion seconds wow. is 31,000 years. You can't fathom that. Okay? Now, when they tell us um, Polaris is 400 and- it, it, no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, the closest star, Alpha Centauri, is, is four and a half light years, which is 25 trillion miles, okay? So if you're traveling at a mile per second, which no human has ever done, and you travel for one trillion seconds, 31,000 years, you've made it 1 25th of the way to the closest star where the other ones are magnitudes farther, okay? They're, they're multiple times farther. Right. And you believe yeah. that we can see Polaris at 433 light years away. Right. 433 light years. I can't even do the math on, on how many trillions of miles that is. It's absolute yeah. insanity. And and one of the other things is which I want to touch on is you light doesn't go forever. They tell us light years that light travels. Oh, that star is probably not even there. It was there a billion years ago, but the light's still traveling whatever nonsense, right? Think of light like a balloon. So if I had an unblown up balloon, that's nice and thick. It, it, the, the thickness of the balloon is the brightness, okay? And I start blowing it up and now it's this big. Well, that just got really thin. Now I blow it up to a hundred yards wide. All of that rubber, all of that light has to spread out, right? So a hundred yards, that, it's gone. You can't even see it, okay? So light- okay. As it expands out, it, it follows what's called the inverse square law, which means every time you double the distance, it's a quarter of the brightness. That's diminishing so fast, okay? It is scientifically yeah. provable that you can't see our sun at three times the distance, but at 24 times the distance that they tell us the sun is, it would be too small to see, and the brightness is, uh, is just another, another huge problem, right? 24 times the distance, the sun is scientifically sure. provable, scientifically provable that it's too small to see, okay? Many times over, sure. but they tell us Polaris is 433 light years away. Let's put it in comparison. Polaris is uh, 24 times the distance of our sun is three light hours. Polaris is 48 times bigger than our sun. So three light hours times 48 is six light days. At six light days away, it's scientifically provable that the angular size of Polaris, skipping the brightness issue, is too small to see. 
at six light days, but they tell us it's 433 light years away. This is where people's minds just shut down. They don't think because like, oh, somebody's with a bow tie and a white lab jacket figured it out. Yeah. And, uh, and they, they know better. And, and it was in the books that the Rockefellers funded for us, right? To keep us as good little slaves yeah. living lost in space. Lost in space. Well, with the with Polaris, you can see that through like uh, those keyhole slots and things like uh, what, uh, not Stonehenge, but um, like the Georgia Guidestones has one, right? You can right. see it line up every year the same spot because it barely moves anyway right through that little key how would that be possible if we're doing what they're saying is happening right. yeah we're, that. we're corkscrewing through space going you know four and a half billion miles from where we were the year before and when we look through polaris it's uh there's no parallax you know parallax is when you know you're driving down the highway the trees are whizzing by but the mountains in the background are moving really slow everything changes yeah. you know, as you move things change that's parallax and the global argument is Oh, it's so far away that even though we're going four and a half billion miles a year, uh, nothing moves. Okay. Right. And they also tell us 4,000 years ago, we had a different North star because of the wobbling of the earth and another 4,000 years, we'll have another North star. Well, do the math, right? In, uh, since Stonehenge was built in 1981, um, the North star would have moved at least a half a degree, if not more, a half a degree would have thrown it right out of that hole. Okay. It's still there. It's still there. Polaris does a tiny oh. little circle, a tiny little circle, and it never moves. Right? We're talking, we've, we've touched on the history, but what are the most common hurdles that you see, like top two or three with people accepting this and, and have, if we haven't addressed them already? Because I want to knock those out for people before we start pulling away the reasons why we believe this, like over history and stuff. I want to talk a little bit about the history of, of where this stuff came from and who gave it to us. Uh, rephrase your question. Sure. Um, what What are your biggest hurdles from a science perspective? I mean, I've got some some of the critics in my chat that gave me some suggested questions. If we get to it, but Let's I want to talk like the the deep state scientists, basically, who gave us the lies, like uh, like Copernicus. You know, let's get into the Copernicus and stuff. But let's make sure that we're addressing the science because I'm a little I'm weaker on the science of this when it comes to the angles and the mathematics and the lasers and the cameras, I'm really strong when it comes to like the historical figures, the, the, the occult, the Freemasons, their deep state yeah. connections, what they did with history. I'm, I'm researching all that area. Have you gone into the Taria yet? Um, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've got a map and that's on there. The mud floods, Tartaria, yeah. the giants, the Nephilim, everything. Yeah. You, you need to look into Tartaria and then you'll realize that everything's a lie. The wild West is a lie. OK, there was an advanced civilization here in the 1800s, in the 1900s. Just look yeah. at the World's Fairs, San Francisco World's Fair, the Philadelphia World's Fair, all these fairs, these buildings. They, we can't even build them today, but they were here. Our, you know, Washington, D.C., our Capitol building was here before Columbus got here. OK, what's going on? Right? There was a worldwide civilization here um, with advanced yeah. antiquitech, you know, um, free energy, communications, all this stuff. It was all here. So when you talk about these men, Aristophanes, Pythagoras, Copernicus, Galileo, all made up stories. You might as well talk about Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner. Okay. You're talking about like the Greco, they call it like Greco Roman architecture, where it's like on all the continents and they're all very similar. It, it's everywhere. Okay. Yeah, there's the, that there's that and there's the megalithic stuff too. the stones that we couldn't possibly move today, making gigantic structures like just, just uh, recently there was massive. Um, I think it was in Philadelphia, one of the um, the obelisks that was supposedly brought from Egypt and then erected in the 17 or 18 hundreds. Right. They tried to move it literally. I think it was like last year and they brought in a crane and the crane tipped over. They brought in three cranes. They had to drill holes in it and put you know bars through it and three cranes took them forever to move this thing but we have to believe that they brought it over on a ship and put it up with pulleys and and horse drawn wagons okay that's just that's just insanity i have a slightly different theory and i've thrown it out a little bit there and this is just me talking you believe that once you understand that we're not a heliocentric you know spinning ball in an infinite impossible space vacuum you have to come to the conclusion there's a creator right so there's a creator we're not saying who or what the creator is yeah. yeah, well, I did too. I was a, I guess I was an atheist before, and now I'm like, I'm forced. You know, there's, there's verses yeah. 
in the Bible that basically say, once you see my creation, you can no longer deny my existence. And that's a fact. So yeah, your journey, on, I'm not saying, you know, how you should um, honor the creator or anything. Um, I have my own views on that. And that's everyone else's personal journey. But think about this, right? If you look into uh, Tataria, these buildings, they were using the Earth's energy, right? They, these buildings were literally like alive, like the whole planet is alive, the whole plane is alive. All of the luminaries in the sky, I believe, are part of this living system. We're part of this living system. We can't live anywhere else but here on Earth. And so you're a creator. You create this amazing, amazing realm, okay? And then you're going to plop some people down in here. And you're going to say, okay, you struggle for a thousand years and figure out how to build buildings and figure out how to make energy. And you figure, you figure this all out. Or perhaps, just perhaps, I'm throwing it out there and I need somebody to kind of look through the scriptures um, in, in different religions to see if there's any, anything referring to this. Wouldn't you throw down a little infrastructure? Like, hey, I'm going to build this amazing place. Wouldn't I throw down some kingdoms, connected, free energy coming out of the ground, communications, like, like incredible stuff like we see? Wouldn't you throw yeah. down some infrastructure? If I, I have a creator, theory if you want to hear it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think. For, I, first, I, first, I, I want to ask, though. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish your thought. No, no, I was just saying, I was well, saying, I was saying that uh, I, I, I propose that perhaps some infrastructure was created with the creation. Like Anchor Watts. Go look at Anchor Watt. Jesus, go look at Anchor yeah. Watt. That's incredible. Yeah. So I agree with you that like all of, basically once you understand the shape, the science and the history and everything else, it all points back to a creator. Now I want to ask before I dive into like my, my theory on this, when you said that these figures behind you, like Pythagoras and Copernicus were made up. Now, you, like they didn't exist at all. They're just made up people or not, not necessarily they made up the science. Okay. So there's some, I want to clarify. There's some literature like Aristophanes, um, you know, that showed him as a mathematician back then, but no, there's many other mathematicians, authors that came out of those areas that wrote books and never mentioned Aristophanes, the guy that figured out the earth is a globe with his sticks and shadows, right? That, that you know, mm -hmm. how, how the, you know, how is that possible that they didn't mention him. That's like writing a, um, uh, a history of the Chicago Bulls and leaving out Michael Jordan, never mentioning him. It, Aristophanes I, wasn't mentioned until um, the mid-1900s, right? He's in no books until the mid-1900s, right? But his sticks and shadows, think about this. He assumed that the sun rays were coming in parallel because we had an infinitely far sun, infinitely far, 93 million miles, whatever it is, Okay. Well, one, he never saw parallel rays because no one ever has, okay? But he's like, oh, the sun's so far away, the rays come in parallel, and therefore my experimental work. Well, he also believed back then that we were geocentric. So how does a little tiny pebble Earth have a sun orbiting it that's infinitely far away? That's impossible, right? So sure. th their story doesn't even hold up. On a flat Earth, no shadow, shadow. You do the same math, and you can figure out the sphericity of this flat plane. So this, this feeds back into my, my theory on kind of where, where those buildings came from, uh, and it, it's complicated. So I'm going to so, use that as a segue into the, into the Freemasons and, and like their belief system. So like confirming that those people were, or at least some of those people were indeed real people like Darwin, for example, let's say he was a real human being. He gave us something that we know is bogus in terms of evolution, even mainstream, you know, geneticists are moving toward panspermia that... I, the, the idea that aliens created us or something or that, that we were seeded somehow because evolution has so many flaws. They never found the missing link, for example. In fact, multiple times, scientists have been caught faking missing links with monkey bones and, and animal parts and, and human skulls or something. So if they're all connected through the same religion, which is Freemasonry in many cases, because Darwin and, and many of these others were connected through their, you know, their fraternity, um, that belief system should give us some clues. I think when you really look into their belief system, these people write about worshiping Satan and think that they're connected to uh, giant spirits, which goes right back to the pre-flood ancient myths of the Nephilim from the Bible, which, you know, the pre-flood world, uh, if indeed fallen angels in Genesis six came here and gave us technology, 
that's where those things came from, those buildings that and advanced civilizations. Sure. That goes, that, that fits right in with what I was saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, so that's very, that's very interesting. But um, when you talk about the flood, how do you flood a ball floating in space next to uh, adjacent to a vacuum? Uh, not yeah. as easily as you can flood the Antarctic basin. Easy. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. easy. The, open up the heavens above, let the rivers fall in, fill up the pond, overfill it. And part of, and part of the human history is that it's still flooded. And that's why so many things are still below the waves, Absolutely. like Tartaria and yeah. so much. You know, it, it, to, to cap that point off that my, my belief that the deep state is in, intentionally trying to hide the creator using all of these various false sciences, <clears throat> the Big Bang Theory itself came from a seance uh -oh. with a fallen angel according to uh the people I, I that came, came up with it, it i thought it came from a, a, a roman priest I uh, a, a from priest what i've researched that. it came from a, a joke from cosmologist fred hoyle who coined the term big bang while making fun of gamal's theory uh evolutionary theory of the universe the big bang's nebular hypothesis which is necessary for the big bang to work at least the hypothesis was come up with by emmanuel swedenberg during a seance and he said the angels told him the theory the secrets of the evolution of the solar system and this is from like the 1600s i mean a lot of this freemasonry stuff has has occult backgrounds and you know when you look into what they're writing in their own texts like uh, albert pike morals and dogma that kind of stuff they talk about worshiping lucifer and they talk about hiding it from people behind you know, a, a friendly Christian or, or Muslim or Catholic or whatever face. That's kind of how they recruit. They're the secret society that hides in plain sight. And that's where all these symbols and stuff, I think, like the way they name all of the Apollo spacecraft and everything else, that it's all named after these Nephilim. Very interesting. It's, uh, you know, we have uh, yeah. the Apollo missions and uh, the, um, Elon, uh, Elon, what well, Elon, what a joke. Elon's a fraud. You understand, you know that not, none of the companies that he's oh, yeah. runs is are all fake. I got a five minute video called Elon Musk is a fraud. Uh, watch that by Greg Reese. Um, and you'll see that he's a complete and total clown. He's a puppet. Um, truck. Yeah, absolutely. It's all cyber truck with him. The whole, yeah. his whole career is, is, is cyber truck. Cyber truck. What is that? Oh, no, you didn't see. Okay, so when he unveiled his new Cybertruck, you know, thing, it was supposed to be this armored car, bulletproof, really oh, cool, super and gas it, efficient. And, it, and he busted the window out twice with like yeah. a baseball, just yeah. unveiling it for everybody yeah. to see. It was just a big flop. His cars are killing people. His, his Everything he makes is, is either deadly or stupid or doesn't work. Right. It's absolute, absolute insanity. And he's not yeah. going to space. I mean, we look at, at his latest launch. It's, un, it's un, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. That's really the way to put it because it's not believable. It's all nonsense. You watch the Blue Origin did a launch just the other day. It's the worst launch I've ever seen. It's so horrible. And now uh, they, they supposedly brought six civilians up. One of the women they brought up runs a space camp for kids, right? To teach kids to want to be astronauts, okay? This is just like an MK Ultra mind control camp. And uh, it, it's ruin. Yeah, it's ruining. It's just a bunch of actors, liars, and um, you know they're going to be exposed. So uh, let's. I, I, I had a note here to talk about fisheye lenses because that's an important one. That's really you know people are often deceived by fisheye lenses. A lot of the debunk people, uh, like those um, MythBusters or whatever, they'll go up in a camera that's a fisheye lens and it'll yep. show you a curved Earth and then like gotcha, you know, right. So, you know, we look at um, four pictures are from 120,000 feet. Which one is from NASA? Okay. It's got to be number two. Yeah, number two. And um, this is, you know, this is what NASA shows us. And this is what we really see when we send a balloon up uh, to 120,000 feet. Right. And then we have the Red Bull guy, which uh, ballers don't even, the anti-flat earthers don't even use it anymore because it's been so debunked. Whenever you see a curve, take it into, into a paint, or, you know, a, a graphics program and get a, a NASA photo of the Earth and then match up the curve, okay? All of this land here is Arizona, okay? I, I never knew Arizona was that big, right? All of that land is Arizona. 
And um, when you when you wow. see, you know, again, this is what NASA shows up, put it on the Earth. It makes absolutely no sense. You know, big one is um, Lake Tahoe, right? This is what we see, but this is what they show us. Lake Tahoe is flat, right? Yeah. And yeah. um, and then you know, on a on a ball, on a ball. Um, here's here's a better shot of uh. This is all New Mexico. We can look and we can see these rivers and stuff. This is all New Mexico. When did Mexico go cover a quarter, New Mexico, cover a quarter of the earth, right? And then yeah. when, um, when um, Felix went up, he um, saw, you know, the, the earth should drop down, but it, it stayed at eye level. So when he opened up the non-fisheye lens, which was behind his seat, when he opened the door, we got a quick view, and here is the horizon. Well, when he climbed in, here's the horizon when he's on the ground. Went up 120,000 feet, and the horizon never dropped. Okay? Does that make any sense to you? Mm -hmm. We just take a look at it. Here he is, right? 120,000 feet, level, stationary. Here he is on the ground, 10 feet off the ground. 128,000 feet, 10 feet off the ground. It doesn't yeah, change. Yeah, I, I can't trust it, anything it, it, out of NASA. Well, this is this is a NASA supposedly, but um, you know, there was two Red Bull space jumps before the one that was televised, and they all had regular cameras and everything was flat. And then the one that they televised, yeah. they um added uh, GoPro. GoPro got the sponsorship, and everything was curved. Now Felix, you know, in his interview, it seemed kind of forced. He goes, "Oh, it was amazing. It's so great. I saw the curve of the Earth." I felt a little forced to me. Now, maybe he was expecting to see the curve of the earth. He was wearing a round goggled helmet that he never got his head out of. That would make you see the curve of the earth if you're standing at sea level. Okay. Uh, the curve of, you know, the, not the curve of the earth. It would see a curved earth. So, you know, is he lying? Is he a paid liar? Or is he a useful idiot? Uh, I don't know. Well, they wouldn't even know the difference if, you know, according to their own people, as late as the 60s uh, yeah. from going up or just being inside of a capsule that's just for test. Yep. Um, you know, it, you know, NASA or the other space agencies, they're all they all basically use the same logo, which seems to be like a serpent's tongue speaking through a flat disc. Right. Is that just me that catches that? Well, absolutely. It's not it's not just you. Um it's a it's a snake. I mean, tongue. I speak the symbols at least. You know, I, I get the symbols when they when they communicate in symbols. Absolutely. I mean, this is the NASA logo. Yeah, and they're all a variation of that. All of right. the other countries have something really similar to that. And like right. you mentioned earlier, all of, like the UN and stuff, they're all showing you the Antarctic basin and the real map, but they're just drawing leaves. And have you ever seen the aerial view of the Vatican? Um. Uh, it's I a, think it's I have. A, I'm sure I have. Snake. Yeah. It's a snake. Yeah, and then I when have. you go inside and you look up towards the pulpit, it's the Audience snake size. eyes. Yeah. And, yeah. The, the, yep. the, 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 it's, it's a snake. What are the odds? Yeah. What's up with that? Well, what is I, up I, with that? I, uh, I dive a lot into where the Freemasons and the religion and, and how they've interacted and where they've infiltrated it and what they've changed. And like, uh, interestingly, Catholicism banned Freemasonry at one point because they were so like anti-christian but at some point they've infiltrated and undone a lot of that and now they're everywhere and basically secret societies freemasons jesuits uh, catholic they're all sort of similar and they kind of run the world they're yeah. satanists they admit it and it's in the doctrines it's in the doctrines like they call the the pope god on earth they call him father it says in the bible call no man father i, I don't want to pick on catholics they're usually good people but the popes, the, the 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 pedophile priests, the bishops, they're worshiping false doctrine. Yeah. And uh, there's there's some crazy stuff going on in this world with, uh, you know, the trafficking of children and stuff. And just think about this. It's way worse than anyone even that's researching it can imagine at this point. And where would be a great place to hide bodies that nobody would ever look? In nuclear yeah. waste canisters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've heard I've heard some stories of large groups of people being kidnapped and taken to like places in Antarctica, probably for like military installations and slave well, labor, that sort of thing. There's also we've had well. a 
we've had um we had a, a semi whistleblower uh 94 year old guy who was very hesitant to talk about what's going on in Antarctica he said he's under a non disclosure until he's not, until he's 100 great great um but he said um there's millions of people living in Antarctica in cities and they're not allowed to communicate with us hmm. yeah i believe it breakaway civilization um yeah and and it, you know it all it, it, they go, they know that the world is the shape it is they've known this since um you know operations high jump and the ones that came right after that what was it called uh uh deep Fish freeze ball, that's deep when they freeze, were scouting right. and yeah yeah in 55 that's when they figured out it was the firmament and they, they've known all of this and then immediately nasa was formed to convince us that it was not flat yeah that's and, it and that, that there don't, lies, don't look I over think, here the, look, the look up there we're going to the moon look over here oh my god free land no no we're on the moon and uh, the moon landings yeah. they don't hold up at all right the, all yeah. these guys founded nasa right a uh uh an animator, an ex-Nazi, you know, Werner von Braun, you know, and the whole story of Project Paperclip, it's also a made-up story because there was no space race. There was no Cold War, okay? These are all things that, that our fear is, is based on. And when you tell people there was no Cold War, what are you talking about? They, 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 it's part of their identity disappears. You know, as Crow says, belief is the enemy of knowing. Well, well we're, we're ego, seeing it now. ego is the protector of belief, Right. Werner von Braun wrote a book in the 1950s called Project Mars about a breakaway civilization that went to Mars run by a guy named Elon. That's a that's a big warning sign right there. In but we're seeing, I want to comment. And now, and now here's Elon's rocket that's supposed to go into Mars. Looks familiar? Looks similar? Right? That's insane. Elon said he wants to redesign yeah. it and make it pointier. It looks like something from from like a twenties book, anyway, of, uh, of space and science. Uh, um, it looks like uh, those horrible, horrible movies. To to your comment on the Cold War, I mean, if you just look at what's going on with Russia and Ukraine right now, it's not hard to believe that you know, war propaganda can turn into historical fact. You know, I I use the word fact loosely, but uh, as as they rewrite history. So I'm showing here, this is one of Elon Musk's rockets landing on a, on a raft in the middle of the ocean, all right? And with, with by the way, I'm a, a wind surfer, kite surfer. This, this is blowing 30 knots out there, okay? There's huge rolling waves out here, and this thing's landing on a raft. This here is a movie from the 1950s. 1950s, 1960s, what does it say? I can't say it. 1958 or 59? Um, 59. Yeah, it's the same thing. What, what this is predictive programming and all of a sudden we're doing it and everybody believes it. Okay. Fair enough. Everyone believes it. Absolute and total nonsense. Okay. Um, we've talked a little bit about curvature, but do you want to talk about why boats disappear over the horizon or anything? That's a big one. People are always asking about yeah, uh, so, the boat that so disappears. On a, on, a, on a physical earth, on a, on, a, um, on, a, on a physical earth, on a globe earth, if my fingernail is a boat and I'm sailing away, it's going to disappear over this horizon. And now you can't see it. Zoom in. You still can't see it. Zoom out. Mm -hmm. It's behind a physical horizon. So on a globe, there's required to be a physical horizon. Make sense? Absolutely. Bigger the globe. You know, based on globe math, that horizon for a six foot tall person standing next to the edge of calm water is just three miles away because the water will drop. The earth will drop six feet. And so all of the surface of the water beyond that should be behind that physical horizon, okay? But we can see too far. We can see things that are, that are way farther than, um, than, than uh, the, the globe would require us. Now, when you're seeing something, in the distance, the sky will just come together, and where the sky meets the earth becomes your horizon, Right, and you can't see farther than that because the angular size is too small for you to see. But if I zoomed in, I can make it bigger, and then I can see farther again, and it goes farther away. So let's take a look at sure. uh, at, at this empty horizon. So you got an empty horizon here, and if I'm zooming in, as I increase my angular size, all of a sudden the boat appears because I'm increasing the angular size. Now, as I and zoom how out, how far is that? Um, so, well, that's a good question. 
um, it's far enough to disappear. Now look, it's disappearing from the bottom up. You can't see the hull and it's gone. And people say it's over the curve, but it's not. I just proved it's not over the curve because I zoomed in on it. I didn't zoom it up over the curve. I just zoomed in on it. Now, can my finger hide this entire ball? No. Okay. But if my finger was a wave in the foreground and the ball is the boat, as I go away, the entire ball will disappear. Okay. Because things get, yeah. things, things get smaller in the background. So these little waves here are hiding the boat, right? Go to the water's edge and look at it and rationally look at the water. The water, all that water out there that's up at your eye level is below your feet. How is it up at so, my eye level when it's really below my feet? This is the one where people can easily do this, like in their own, not backyard, but in their own local well, environment, this, they can this, prove or disprove this one, right? This is the one that got me. I went out and bought a P900, Nikon P900, super zoom camera, tripod, went down to the beach, zoomed in on things that should have been dozens of feet over the curve. A boat, um, a, a buoy uh, 11 miles away, if it was only 10 miles away, it would be 60, 66 feet of curvature, Okay. You know, and Globers are going like, no, no, you know, you have to only take half of that because, you know, it's, it's, it's on the bump. It's ridiculous arguments, but okay, I'll give it to you. I'll give you a 50-point handicap in a game of golf, okay? Right? It, so let's say it's only 33 feet. I can still see the buoy. It's only 10 feet high. I can still see it. It should be behind 33 feet, really 60 feet, 60 plus feet. I can still see it. Okay? So... There, there may be some people that say, well, that doesn't prove the world's flat. It proves that the world's maybe bigger okay, than we've been told. I, I but went it there. does disprove the official story, at right. least. And, and, and I want to point that out before and, somebody. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was my first uh, you know, defense mechanism. But then we have people like Jay Tolan Media, who um, uses infrared. And he's seeing things so far away that the Earth would have to be a thousand times bigger than they tell us. And there would still be curvature, but uh, it would have to be like a thousand times bigger to see what he can see, right? And if the Earth is a ball and it's a thousand times bigger than they tell us, there's a problem. There's a big problem. They're hiding more land. What's on the rest of the ball? Yeah. Maybe there's a thousand more continents or, or 9,000 more continents, okay? If the Earth is a thousand times bigger, there could be, you know, dozens of thousands more continents. This... Uh, camera is one foot off the ground. Agreed. According to Globe Math, the horizon should be 1.22 miles away. Okay, this is nine and a half miles away, 9.4 miles away. There should be 59 feet of curvature, but we can even see the water for dozens of miles beyond it. The Glober explanation for this is so retarded that I, I, it hurts me to say it. They think that the water is refracting up and stopping at eye level, and the water in front yeah. of this is also refracting somehow and lining up with the water in the background ridiculous absolute that's kind of like desperation. the excuse for the entire out the entire outline of chicago's uh skyline showing up across lake michigan well, perfectly right that was we, what they said it was refraction they weather, said it well, they said clouds. it was a mirage but um so a mirage will change over time well we have time lapses that over 24 hours different weather during the day nights lights and none of the buildings ever moved. They're still there. And we even, on one day where you could see it, we had two of our guys got on a boat and put a camera on it and went 50 miles across and it never disappeared. If it was a mirage, it would disappear at some point. And it never this disappeared. This is science. This is, this is the real science. scientific method. That, this is actually, actually how it works. Yeah. Right. And I want right. to differentiate because like people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they go on, they use big words and they insult people for their beliefs, but they don't actually have science on their and they'll admit that when you really corner them, they'll admit they know nothing. Right. Um, so, you know, we can continue if you have any thoughts. I do want to briefly touch about geocentric versus heliocentric. We did talk about that briefly, but that's a, it's a parallel but similar argument that overlaps. Not only is, is the shape important, but are we the center of the universe or are we just one thing with many other things out there? So... My understanding, now there could be more worlds. We live in the Earth system. Are there other systems out there? I don't know. I look at the flat Earth as the basement of the universe. 
we're on this non-moving plane and all the things, all the lights we see in the sky, I don't believe they're physical. I think they're energetic. I think they're life. I think that maybe stars are souls and maybe planets are gods. Okay. They're not physical terra firma. They're here within the earth system. The moon and the sun are the anode and the cathode of our power system. And the moon may deliver and remove souls from this earth. I don't know, but it's tied with the reproductive system. That's for sure. Okay. There's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Um, And I um, won't ever claim that I understand it, but you know, believing that the moon, you know, it's gravity of the moon is causing the tides and also causing women's uh, menstrual cycles is absolute insanity. Right. If, yeah. um, if until the look, vaccines get them. Yeah. Until the vaccines get here. Here's, here's, the, um, here's the, the, um, explanation for tide. So, you know, there's a tide, high tide, uh, and then six hours later, there's a low tide and six hours later, there's a high tide. Okay. So if this is the moon. It's pulling the water, pulling the water away from the earth, creating a high tide. This is what they tell us. Okay. So it's, it's pulling this water. See this hump of water here? It's being pulled mm-hmm. by the moon, right? So this is being pulled by the moon. My head was the moon. It's pulling a high tide here. But there's another high tide over here. You know what their explanation for that is? That the gravity from the moon is pulling the earth away from the water on the other side. Now, I know that you wow. just lost brain cells from even hearing that, but this is the official. <laughs> yeah, wait, bit. wait, it gets worse. And then the earth rotates inside of those bulges. And so you rotate into the high tide. Okay. This is, this is their official story. When in fact, the, the sun and the moon, when uh, if you had the, the sun and the moon, if this is the sun and this is the moon, this is that we'd have a, this would be a, where, where am I? Where am I? How is that looking like that? Um, it's all backwards for me. I can't do it. So the sun and the moon, when we have a new moon, the sun and the moon are on the same side of the earth. We should have a bigger tide because you get the sun's gravity and the moon's gravity pulling the water, but we don't. We get bigger tides when one's on one side, one's on the other. It's when the moon is powered up, powered up. It's not a dusty, dirty ball reflecting impossible light. Right? How does the moon make it so I can read by it and it casts a shadow of me on the ground when it's a dusty rock? Find me a rock that you can reflect sunlight off of that will cast a shadow on something else. And, and forget traveling 238,000 miles to do it. Just have it cast a shadow on something else in the same room. Okay? It's impossible. It's the dumbest thing ever. Well, you know, ge- geocentricity... You know, for example, one of the other positions that we or one of the other arguments that we could talk about is uh, what is it, the Coriolis effect? What do they call it, where the planet supposedly spins and everything kind of stays on top of it, even though it's spinning a thousand miles an hour or something ridiculous? Coriolis effect, you know, the Globers, the anti flat earthers will say it affects bullets, but it doesn't affect balloons or airplanes or helicopters. It only affects bullets. <clears throat> but if you talk to any army guy, except the one guy that made that, that stupid video that if you Google Coriolis, it'll come up. Um, they never, ever, 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 ever calculate Coriolis. They calculate wind and temperature and humidity, but not Coriolis, right? And Neil deGrasse Tyson said at one Super Bowl that the spin of the earth helped that field goal go in because by the time it was in the air, the earth spun a quarter of an inch. And that's why it bounced in to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Absolute insanity. Wow. Okay. Um, so dealing a, a little bit with the, are there any other um, uh, earth not moving scientific arguments we should cover first, other than talking about the Coriolis and geocentricity? Well, you know, where Because if it's not spinning, that's a big part of this argument. So, so we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Okay. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. That's faster than the speed of sound, right? And people are like, oh, I'm in an airplane. You don't notice it. Well, take the outside of the airplane off, double the speed and nosedive a mile a minute and tell me if you feel it, okay? Because that's what you're doing on the earth. We're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, okay? 
we're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, speeding up and slowing down as we go around the sun. We go faster and slower and faster and slower, right? When we're during our winter, we're whipping at a tighter angle, turning, right? Think about the forces, spinning, orbiting, corkscrewing through space. But then you go out into nature and you see this. What is this container doing? It's doing it's nothing. perfectly not moving at all. It's, the, it's and, perfectly and, still. And so they tell us because of the spin of the earth, the water bulges 14 miles high at the equator. 14 miles high. Airplanes fly at five miles high. So when I'm flying from North America to South America, at some point, my pilot has to go triple his altitude just to skim over that hump. So I, I'm, I'm Nonsense. convinced the world is Nonsense. not moving yeah, um, duh. And, and that it's geocentric and that it, it's a flat plane. Um, Absolutely. With mountains, mountains Absolutely. and such. Look, mountains, um, flat water. I, I'm in not favor moving. of snow. I'm in favor. Yeah. yeah. I'm in favor of snow. There's a little delay because I'm on satellite. I'm in favor of snow globe earth, you know, the, the firmament and everything involved. And, and I don't, I don't want to necessarily push the Hebrew Christian view, but that's sort of my background. Um, after I came to flat earth, I was an atheist beforehand, like I said, but when I was researching just, you know, pre-flood text and, and ancient history and what the deep state believed, I realized that the people that run the world, which are clearly evil and hiding all of this from us, they have this like particular hate for, for Christ. Like they, there's actually, of all the religions out there, they're like really against this one particular religion. They take opposition to this. And then they name all of their, um, you know, secret stuff or even their public stuff, like their companies uh, or their, uh, their space missions. They're basically all named after Nephilim. I heard one guy say that, you know, we name, our uh, our planets, our months, our days, our calendars, our chemicals, our continents, our, an ocean, all of these are named after these like false god Nephilim. So, uh, you know, whatever religious background you prefer, I'm, I'm kind of going at it from the, the biblical perspective. But when I'm trying to figure out why the, 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 the spiritual, the religious, the, the moral implications of why they're doing what they're doing. They hate you know, God. all of the science yeah. aside, they hate God. They're hiding God from us. They're hiding resources from us. They're hiding, obviously, technology. I think there's a good argument to be made for, for a breakaway civilization and secret space program, which is not about space at all. But that's kind of the cover, right, is, is space research, whatever, the next Cold War. Right. Um, but they, they do seem to have this opposition to God. And then in their own texts, I was talking about it, like Morals and Dogma, Albert Pike, um, Manley Hall, these, these Masonic authors have put out that they basically worship Satan. And they seem to hate God. So there's this like anti-Christ aspect to the deep state. It's not an anti-Buddha or an anti-Muhammad aspect. It's a specific thing that they've, they've got going on. So that's where... You know, I was when I found Flat Earth, when I was researching and stuff, I, I, I tried to make, make sense of that. Um, basically, anyway, anything I, they I tell you, to... basically, basically, anything they tell you, um, think the opposite. So anything they go after, they say is bad, yeah. it's good. It's probably good. Anything they say is yeah. bad, you know. So that's really a very strong argument for your side of the fence, right? The fact that they yeah. hate it. Contrarianism. It's something... Uh, it's something to look into for sure. Contrarianism is, is, has always served me well. Basically where I was going with that is um, there are historical references in the scriptures in the Bible, probably in other religious books as well, but from the ancient world about this sort of thing. And if you take the Bible to be seriously, a lot of people are waking up to this because of scriptural arguments. So I just want to mention that there are 240 plus verses of uh in in the uncensored scriptures the ones that we still have that they didn't take out freemason church and freemasons and all those satanists and these 240 plus verses all confirm the shape or the unmoving status like it doesn't move it's set on pillars or you know you could all of it can be seen from one position waters above firmament um the underworld it's it's all laid out there and it seems to make more sense from this thousands of years old historical Bible, religious, historical, whatever you want to look at it as, uh, than modern science, as though it's all being proven to be true. I don't know if you've considered that or if others have considered that that are searching this stuff, but I came at it at the same time as a, as a hardcore anti-theist 
who was debate level with the arguments against religion. Uh, I pretty much never lost an argument when it came to this. And then I realized all the sciences that I had thought I believed in were, were bogus, were created by Freemasons who worship Satan. And they're trying to lie to us. And I couldn't figure out why. And then it's, it hit me. They're hiding God. So I, I just wanted to discuss what the spiritual implications could mean and why they're doing this, because people think it doesn't matter. People tell me all the time. The shape of the world doesn't matter. Yeah, the shape it's, of the world doesn't matter. It, it's to hide God, because when you have when you have no choice but to understand that there's a creator, that becomes your higher power. Rather, they want they want to be your higher power. They want to be in charge of your mind. And they are not allowed to break our free will, but they were allowed, they're allowed to take it if we offer it to them. So they trick us into offering our freedom, our, our um, spirituality, everything. They literally want our souls. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a war for our souls. And the way they get away with it is most people don't even believe a spiritual war is a thing. They don't, don't even understand that, uh, that, it, that it's real. So yeah. they don't want us to know that we're at the center of creation, that our thoughts create our reality. They don't want us to know that there's infinite resources, infinite water, food, land, everything. They don't want us to know that there's free energy. They don't want us to know any of that because then we become, um, you know, unruly uh, where they, they can't yeah. control us, right? Every hundred years, they try the same thing. What's going on right now, they're trying it again. They tried it, you know, 18, 20, 17, 20, 16, 20, bam, every time. Look into your history. Look what's going on. And, uh, you know, the question is, will God win this time? Um, it's, it's a very interesting thing and it has to do with us waking up. So why am I talking about flat earth? Because everyone that wakes up to flat earth, uh, wakes up to this heliocentric lie. The heliocentric lie is satanic. And, uh, once you wake up to that, um, you unplug from the matrix. The matrix is the heliocentric system. It's a prison for your mind. Just like Morpheus said, matrix heliocentric system, same thing. Okay, when Neo unplugged from the heliocentric matrix, he took back his power. And that's what we're doing. And that's what they don't want us to do. They know if we come together that they lose. That's why they're separating us. They divided us up by fake countries, uh, religions. Um, they divide us up with um, sports teams, with politics, everything. Divide, divide, divide and conquer, right? And if we Great. keep allowing it, um, that's how we lose. And here's the problem. You can't find this information online. They're hiding it. It's there. But you Google like, hey, top 10 reasons the earth could be flat. You're going to get top 10 reasons the earth is not flat, right? Their propaganda, well, they've changed their, their algorithms where it's really difficult to find. That's why I made the app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If I hit the web button, watch this. And one of my favorite buttons on here is um, biblical flat earth right here. Okay, whether you're a Bible believer or not, you have to hit that button and up comes playlists, amazing videos, amazing videos, right? But you won't Rob be able Skiba's to- Rob Skiba's on there, right? Absolutely, yeah. Rob, Rob's all over here. Um, but tons of stuff. And um, one of my favorites is uh, the first one, um, Dear Pastor. It's made by my co-host, Matt Long. And it's eight, eight minutes, I think, uh, eight minutes. And uh, it's something to send to your pastor. OK, it, it will if your pastor doesn't wake up by watching that eight minute video, then you need a new pastor. OK, but all then, of this information is all here at your fingertips. We got books, um, amazing books on Tataria from Martin Leakey. Uh, here's the 21, um, the, the 16 emergency landings. Uh, we have uh, the elusive curve. Great book by my friend Billy. Um, all sorts of stuff and new sections coming. But the most important thing on here is the friend finder, okay? Because you can, when you become a flat earther, you want to find other flat earthers, right? And people are using this literally as a job, as a way to find new people to work with, yeah. new, uh, you know, um, you tap on any one of these dots, um, up comes their, you can send them a message, right? You can check out their profile if they filled out a profile. Right. And you, you can make new friends. You could have meetups. We just had a meetup in New York um, that was we had we sent out a group message on the friend finder to everybody within 50 kilometers. We had, uh, you know, 60, 70 people show up for an awesome day hanging out at a Mexican restaurant. So very cool. 
it's a it's an amazing way to use their technology against them to bring us together right there's already babies happening because of this app so um it, it's it's right. um it's really a super fun way and uh i think i, I showed it at the beginning but if i if i just show you the world um look this is the uk these are the people that have the app it's crazy and it, it's happening this is exciting yeah it's super yeah. exciting and super fun it's called the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app oh by the way if um uh, here's the challenge if you still think the earth is a globe, you weren't listening, um, but come up with your proof. But before you send it to me, you have to hit the question mark, which is right there. Okay. And I hit the question mark and up come the questions. Hey, what about ships over the horizon? Right? Well, uh, hit that button. And then these are videos that Google won't serve you. Okay. And when I, I recommend watching, uh, this one right here, this is the best one. It's a 10 minute video and it will show you what happens when a ship goes away. And then it's undeniable and you can go do these things yourself. So um, what about, you know, we didn't get into eclipses, seasons, um, gravity, it's all there. Seasons are one of, you know, I, yes. have, I have a couple of questions from skeptics. I've saved it for the end if you have time uh, um, from my audience. Um, you know, first, first, I want to ask you, though, just before we get to the end, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you know, Rob Skiba's work. Uh, what do you think about his, his seed war topic? I mean, the, the, the whole Nephilim thing, you know, the deep state, I think there's a clear argument to be made that the Freemasons, the deep state, they worship these things and in some cases think that they are related to them. Either way, even if you're an atheist, I think it should concern everybody that the, the people that run the world openly worship Satan with their symbols, with their... Um, <clears throat> with their actions, with their policies, and with their their own words when you read their hidden writings. W do you have any thoughts? Because you mentioned this war and trying to hide God. I think that's what it goes back to. It's the seed war. And, and the, where I'm going with this is aliens. Well, aliens, I believe, are here within the Earth system. They're not coming from outer space. Aliens make perfect sense here. They could be under us. They could be, uh, you know, uh, in the outer lands. Who knows? Um, but they're not coming from distant, impossibly distant planets in a space vacuum. Makes no sense. Yeah, I, I challenged uh, uh, an old peer in independent media named Jordan Sather to a, a flat Earth debate because he's always bashed in the flat Earth stuff. And he's he's big into the alien stuff. And at one point, you know, I, I thought aliens were real. And you know, I, I still think there's a, a, a secret space aspect of research well, and technology the, hidden the, in Antarctica, the not secret, space. The above. secret anti-gravitic space space program the outer space the outer space not outer space yes. up there right so yeah. they have they have secret technology mit just came up with an airplane that they made that doesn't have any moving parts it just uses electric potential to float in the air well that's the real technology this isn't new technology this is old technology right so oh. Good. Yeah. Well, well, where that's going, where I'm going with this is the deep states worship in aliens, they're fallen angel gods, they're coming back, and they're going to sell us this, you know, crap that they're from outer space when they're really from the Old Testament, Genesis six, elaborated in the book of Enoch, which basically said these things were teaching us sin and destroying us genetically right. from day one. We don't and know they where the Nephilim monsters, right? They might be living out here. We live here in this system. Right. And as our North Pole moves around in 12,000 years, our North Pole will be here and our sun will be circling out here, melting out this area. Right. Who knows what's there? Who knows what's there from the last round? OK. It's, I, it's I suspect based on on all of this, you know, what they worship, what they believe, what they're pushing with the space and aliens narrative, even to children, they're pushing it like the hardest propaganda ever. And they're hiding the shape of the earth. They're hiding the creator at the aspect. This is a this is a spiritual war between the false gods, the real god, the the other gods, the other god, whatever you want to call it. This is right. a war between entities, and uh, they lost obviously last time because they're not around anymore, at least openly. They want to come back and rule over us again, like in the pre-flood world, the god kings, blood sacrifice, and all of those amazing temples that they had you know, where they were throwing babies into the fire for Moloch and stuff. They want to bring all that back, I think. And that's think where it, a lot of I, this evil happens. Yeah. I mean, it might already be going on. We don't know. There's so much, yeah. um, there's so much below us 
Um, there's cities, you know, and tunnels all over the world that we're unaware of. So that's where I, you know, and I'm basing that a little bit on a contrarian researcher's mindset. I mean, I'm, I'm logical and I have a scientific mindset. I was an atheist, but when I found out about the, the false sciences and the flat shape and, and everything else going on, I call it biblical earth because it's harder to attack than flat earth. But, you know, geocentricity also, when I found out about all of this, I had to ask. Lost your sound. I hit, I hit mute. Sorry. The big thing here is why? Why are they hiding it all? What are they? What is the attack that we're not seeing? And then I feel like that has to be the aliens, what Rob was talking about with the seed war, the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. I mean, makes perfect sense to me. You know, yeah, that's I, what I, I suspect is happening. Anyway, but you, when you have say, time for a couple of questions. Yeah, a couple of questions. But, if you want to get into the seasons, I'd love to do that. Um, this yeah. is just a shot. These are all the moon landing shots. Well, remember, this side of the moon doesn't sh rotate. So the Earth is over over here, over in front of this, right? But they show us these pictures. How the heck could it take a picture? The Earth would be up here, right? If the Earth, yeah. if we're looking at the moon where they landed, the Earth is over here. It's not off the horizon. And this is what they show us, okay? Besides the size of the Earth being wrong, um, it would be up there, not over there. It, it almost... I'm, and this is my weak spot. I admit it with cameras and angles and such, you know, but it, it almost looks as though they just cut out all the stars. They took the moon itself on a, on a certain night and just turned it into the little blue marble. And otherwise it was just basically like some desert in Arizona. Yeah. It's just, it's nonsense. It's all, it's all okay. ab absolute and total nonsense. Um, seasons. Was that one of your so questions? Seasons. Yeah. Seasons. Okay. Yeah. It's one of the questions that they had. So, so, Imagine you and I were outside freezing cold. Where are you located? Uh, Northeast Florida. All right. So you don't understand what cold is. Okay. But oh, I'm I've been in New and North, like I've been on the border of Canada for a right. year. Uh, so, New Hampshire, so, it's cold. So we're in New Hampshire. It's December and we're sitting outside having a beer and our beers are freezing. And uh, we're, we're sitting yeah. 20 feet apart. And um, somebody has a pole, a pole holding a giant heat lamp directly 10 feet over your head. And you're like, oh, that feels really good. It melts the snow around you, okay? And you're sitting there warm. And I say, where is your, where is that sun? And you're like, oh, it's up there. It's up there. That's your summer sun, right? I'm 20 feet away. I'm like, that's my winter sun. It's all the way over there and it's lower in the sky. Even though it's still 10 feet in the air, it's over there. It's not up there. It's over there. Now that person walked over to me, keeping the sun, keeping the heat lamp at the exact same height, I'm going to watch it rise until it's over me. And now it's directly over me. I can feel the heat and you're going to look at it and go, oh, it's down there. It's lower, just like our sun. So here we go. This inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. The outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. You with me? And the sun migrates the uh, six months out, six months in. So I'm going to jump the sun forward to, to June. June. And in June, it's over the Tropic of Cancer. Do you know why it's hot in Florida The sun in June? Because the sun is directly over Miami. It's, direct, it's high in the sky. That's your summer sun. It's winter in Australia, right? Or this is in the inner Arctic North is having its summer because the sun is close and it's arcing around. It's arcing around the Arctic. Now out here, it's winter, but six months later, the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn, and now it's their summer. It's high above them. It's we're in the winter because it's farther away from us. It's not too far from Florida. That's why it's still warm there, because Florida is right in. You know what uh, the the yeah. space the space in between the two tropics is called the tropics. The space outside is the Antarctic. You know why? Because if you're outside of Capricorn, the sun is coming towards you and away it's not arcing around you it's antarcing the antarctic okay that's very and, interesting and then another uh, the the terms the arctic and antarctic arctic means the north and antarctic means not the north almost better to say center not center i mean it doesn't make sense a lot yeah. of other ways yeah. okay that's seasons now one of the uh, questions that i 
get is about the size of the sun, the moon, and the distance. And I, you know, a lot of the the rebuttals, a lot of the debunkings involve taking what we thought we know about the size and the distance and projecting that onto a flat plate in the middle of space surrounded by globes, right? Mm -hmm. Which does not make sense. It's not what anybody is arguing. You know, we're arguing that it's smaller, it's closer, and that it's in a basin and we're not surrounded by other globes necessarily. But that's kind of the, the flat earth society psyop, right? Right. We don't know um, where the sun is um, or the size because it, um, it's, it's in an apparent position. If you and I were standing 50 yards apart at the water's edge and the sun is setting, you're going to see the sun walking on a water, a streak to your feet. I'm going to see it walking on the water to my feet. I look over you. I don't see your line and you don't see my line, right? You can almost say I'm having a personal relationship with the sun that's walking on water. I don't know. Seems a little weird. Okay. Sorry. And, and the sun dies on the 21st of December and is resurrected a few days later. Okay. So yeah. There's, maybe, de there's definitely sun like connections and, and like religious a, sun worship, all that in, a, in the conversation that should be a, had. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it doesn't deny a creator. I think that I'm here and there's a star that represents my soul. I'm having my experience here. Maybe the son of God um, is manif manifests on earth here, and that's the sun in the sky. You know, maybe that's where the, yeah. the, the soul is coming from. You know, the, the, you can say so much about the sun that means the same. You know, it warms our, it keeps us alive. It's a source of life. It heals us. It feeds us, right? Very similar to okay, the so S-O-N. Um, Dad, what was your question? In, ter in terms of size, it's fair to say we can't we can't know yet. We don't know for sure. It, but is it fair to assume that they're smaller and closer than they're being? Oh, you know, obviously you said millions of miles away is the official story. It's obviously closer, and it's got to be smaller, right? Well, absolutely. The sun is clearly here within the Earth system, right? So, and we see it in a uh, in a position relative to our own. So, you know, this is an interesting shot here. This is where this person is seeing the sun. Right? Is that 93 million miles away? Right? How is it right there? Um, we see it inside of our personal atmospheric dome. Okay? And so here's, um, here's a, a little experiment I did. And um, this is, so this looks just like the sun. What this is, is I got a blue sheet hanging and I'm 10 feet on the other side, I have a flashlight. And it really looks like a sun. Interesting. Now, my girlfriend's over here to the left. I said, where do you see the sun? And she goes, oh, I see it right there. Well, I see it right here. I move over to her. She sees the sun there. At the same time, she sees the sun there. I see the sun right there. So we're seeing the same thing in two different positions. Sure. It's untriangulatable. Untriangulatable. A lot of those rebuttals should take into account that we're not arguing the same distance or size. Anyway, so... Um, Another question is what force keeps them in the air? You know, I don't think we can answer that, but it, it's a good I, question. I don't think that anything that we see in the sky is physical, so no force necessary. Fair enough. Yeah, it's it's not, it doesn't have to be a gravitational force if it's some sort of a light force. Um, if the moon is small and close and spinning, why we all see the same side of the moon regardless, regardless where we are situated on Earth? Okay, I'm trying to read from their question. So yeah, no, it, why I, I, does it all appear? Yeah. I, I get it. Um, the answer to that is it's um, the optics of um, what we're seeing. I think space is water. I think that we're seeing things inside our personal atmospheric dome. I think that the sun and the moon, the real source of them is within or above the firmament. And we're seeing it projected, for lack of a better word, right? So here is a guy in a pool. And... Look at his body. It's facing over here, even though he's That's really crazy looking. facing yeah. over there. Okay. So the yeah. optics, the optics of this. Now watch. So the camera's going to walk around and it's wild. The same, the, the, this is the face of the moon. Well, look, it's still facing the same, the same thing. Okay. <laughs> That's it's insane. Good. Yeah. In That's impressive. It, yeah. So um, like the angle, like, those optical tricks really can, uh, I think, wake people up in a sense because 
you, once you see something that makes no sense optically, like it, it, it helps you to understand why this could work. Right. And then people say, well, how big is it? The question is, are these two tables the same width and dimension? I saw that one. Yeah, that's a yeah. cool explanation. And, and they are. But you can't, even though I show you, you still can't reckon it. You can't, unless you can touch it and measure it, you don't know what shape it is, how far it is, or, or anything, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's a strange. That one really threw me. I paused. I was staring at that screen for a while when I saw that video. Yeah, so th um, it's very, very interesting. Okay, um, so. Oh, oh, wait, and one yeah. more thing, one more thing. When we're looking into sure. the sky, we don't know what direction things are going. So here's these two arrows um, through a curved glass. What happens when we pour water in that glass? Okay. It reverses it, right? It reverses the arrow. Okay. And then watch when they move the glass away, the arrows kind of go the wrong direction, right? So the optics of the sky have nothing to do with the shape of the earth. Huh. It, it seems to correct for the distortion of the glass almost as well, yeah. which is interesting. So again, um, look, stop looking at the lights in your ceiling <clears throat> to determine the shape of your floor. Eclipses. <clears throat> what um, is your explanation of the eclipses? Yeah, so in the, the again, we don't have a whole lot of time, but in the app, okay. if, you hit, if you hit what about eclipses, um, I highly recommend, and these, these videos won't show up, scroll down a little bit, um, these two right here. Um, this shows you my idea that the sun and the moon are outside of the system and they're being projected in. And that's why no one has ever seen the moon during an eclipse. You never see it coming. You never see it when it's eclipsed. And you never see it exiting. You see something eclipsing, but I believe that's a mm -hmm. rear, like a rear projection thing that we're seeing. And I did an experiment. I'll show you real quick. Um, I did an experiment. Um, let me just jump forward here. Save us some time. Okay. Um, so we have our, we have, this is, um, real quick. So this is a real eclipse and this is my simulated eclipse. They look very similar. Okay. And what I'm doing is, so during the real eclipse, we saw this right here. This little eclipse thing, it's not moving. Mm -hmm. This is a lens flare, okay? This one is not moving. And it's the, the, that is about the amount of the, the sun was eclipsed at that moment, but this is just blown out because it's so bright. We're like, what the hell is that? I think this is the rear projector, okay? This is what's projecting here. This is just a lens flare, all right? So I, I, um, I, I, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's my eclipse that I made. And I'm doing it from a rear projection. I just got a, a round disc and I'm eclipsing the projection. So let's just jump forward. And here I go. Here, here it is again with thinner paper this time. Look, there's the projector. That's actually the projector behind the, the dome, the dome of vision. Okay. Here's what we saw. Here it is. They look the same. Here's the That's eclipse that we see. Here's the projector. That's it, God's right? projector. Okay. Um, if you still have time, um, <clears throat> why the South Pole has a longer polar day while the North Pole is a long polar night and vice versa. If the South Pole is actually a uh, circle around the flat earth. How does your local sun illuminate it at once? I think you covered that earlier with the map, with the clock, but. So the way, the way that it works is the sun moves in and out. And when the sun moves farther out, that light wraps around the dome. The light, daylight is coming from the sky, not from the sun, okay? So here, here it is. This is uh, time and date on a flat earth map. And here's just the dome with the light outside moving. And when we move it, it wraps around. There's not a 24 hour sun in December in Antarctica. There is 24 hours of light 
but not sun. Or a globe would dictate <laughs> that it would have. That answers it, yeah. Yeah, 24 hours. Uh, like in June, the sun in Australia, and not in, in um, Alaska and Norway, never gets far enough away to set. So December should have the same thing in Antarctica, but it doesn't. Why do stars on the Southern Hemisphere rotate clockwise <clears throat> and on the Northern Hemisphere counterclockwise? So clockwise and counterclockwise, what does that mean? When in reality, no matter where you are, they rise in the East and they set in the West, no matter where you are, right? So if um, the stars are spinning above the flat Earth and I'm in the North and I'm looking South, and they're coming from my right to my left shoulder. Well, if I was in the south looking to the north, I'd turn around and they're coming from my left shoulder to my right shoulder. Okay? So they're going counterclockwise. They, they just turned around. But in, re in reality, it's more complicated than that. And here's an image that I like. I go to the last image in here. Um, I think that the world is more set up like this. We have this toroidal field. And perhaps all of the lights we see in the sky are coming from the black sun, which could be below the earth. And it's being projected up and it could be reflected out in all different directions. There's a lot of evidence that the Southern stars are a reflection of the Northern stars. And they could all be counter rotating in all different positions. But keeping very, it simple, keeping it simple, no matter where you are on the earth, sun, moon and stars all rise in the east, set in the west. You, all you have to do is turn around and it goes from clockwise to counterclockwise. Okay. Um, why, cannot, uh, why can't Southerners see the Polaris and Northerners can't see the Southern Cross? Very simple. If you and I were in a room and there was lights in the ceiling and we're like, oh, look, there's a star there and there's a horse and a cow. And now I expand that room to 10 miles wide and I send you five or eight miles away. Well, one, I can't see you anymore because literally in a quarter of a mile, a 10-foot high ceiling will merge with the floor and everything becomes too small to see. So I call you on your cell phone and I say, hey, look up. Do you see the butterfly and the cow and the horse? And you're like, no, I see completely different stars. Well, I can't see you. You can't see me. And we look up and we see completely different stars. Now rotate all of the stars around the center point in the room and we only see the stars that are in our path. I see the inner stars, you see the outer stars. It's that simple. Huh. Um, I think there's like three more questions here. How do you explain both solar and lunar eclipses if the Earth is flat and both the sun and moon are the same size as mentioned previously? I think we covered that. Um, how do you explain the lunar phases? In other words, why is there a full moon, a new moon, and every phase in between? If the moon itself is the luminary and not reflecting light from the sun, it's not. But I, globe model. I, I believe that the sun and the moon uh, do work off of each other, and the sun is sending electricity to the moon. So when, uh, okay. so it 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 is powering the moon. That's uh, you know, that's one like a plasma one, thing. Perhaps you know, solar power panels are collecting electricity. They're not collecting photons, right? Scientists sure. don't even know how solar power works, right? They have a theory that, oh, it's knocking an electron out and the boron molecule and this and that. It's all nonsense. It's electricity. It's literally electricity, and it's just putting it into a current. It's the simplest thing ever. The sun and the moon migrate in between the two tropics, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. This is the equator. And when they pass a nodal point at the same time, that's when we have an eclipse. The eclipses make absolutely no sense on a globe Earth. What are the odds? that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, 400 times farther, and in this beehive heliocentric system, that they would line up perfectly, like two matched quarters. The odds of that are infinitesimally small. That's for it happening once. But it happens every year, again and again and again and again and again. And guess what? After 18 years, the entire cycle repeats. What? The it, entire cycle it, repeats. It is worth mentioning that like people that think they say, uh, you know, they're like, I got you with this, with the flat earth arguments, then it turns out that it actually reinforces the flat earth arguments. Absolutely. Don't you understand all of this? Um, last Absolutely. question was about Absolutely. seasons, but 
it, do, it did have a sub question about why it's always hot at the equator and, and the poles are always cold. We, we talked about some of that with light. Do well, you want to cover the, the temperature as well? Just, so just very, very easy. The, you know, it's hotter here in August than it is in June. But in August, the sun is farther away than it is in June because the earth it has radiant heat. You're heating it up and you're heating at nighttime. It loses heat and during the day. It gains heat. But um, in June, it's really heating the sun. In July, it's still heated by the sun. In August, it's still gaining heat on a daily basis, even though the sun's moving away. And then in September, it's kind of a wash. In October, you know, it's, it's losing heat in the north okay and that's how that's how the seasons work um and and just you know it's hot in the tropics because the sun is never far from the tropics it goes out in and out so anything in between these two lines the sun is always close and anything in between the two lines the sun passes over it twice in the north never passes over us it comes near us and then it goes away in the outer south it comes near them and then it goes away in the tropics, okay, so, it passes over you twice and never gets far away. So there's the warm zone, and then there's there's areas of shadow both in the center and at the edge. Basically, when it comes to heat, right? Correct. And that's what the, the center is. What was confusing me is is how is it still so cold even in the center? Obviously, Antarctica makes sense at the edge, but right. Well, it's the just sun, a big the enough. Sun green. never the sun never gets too close to the center. It only gets to this line. So just, yeah. and it's not as cold. In the Arctic, okay, it's not as cold in the Arctic when you know it, it should be the coldest because it, it none of it makes any sense on a ball. On a ball, the same degrees north and the same degrees south should have the same animal life, plant life, and weather six months apart, but it doesn't. Okay, sixty degrees south. 70, 60, 60 degrees south, there's no plants, there's no animals, there's nothing. A couple of penguins, right? Yeah, yeah, I think Admiral Byrd said there wasn't a plant big enough to make a toothpick, okay? But 60 degrees north, there's, there's bison and there's people and there's plants and animals and all sorts of stuff. Doesn't make any sense. Only makes sense on a flat earth. Only makes sense on a flat earth. Fair enough. Um... That's it for me. I mean, I, there's there's other types of sciences out there that are just as corrupt, like devolution. I think I mentioned earlier. Um, I think that are related to this topic, just in case people are researching, you know, overlapping areas. But D Dave, Flat Earth Dave, thank you for your time. Um, I, I definitely hope people will download your app and support <clears throat> it and check out every video on there. The you app? guys, look at the stuff I've done too on the Serapium. We've got a lot of content there. Just archiving this stuff to make sure people don't. Uh, lose it because they are deleting and censoring stuff. Um, the app is. Thank you again. I'm going to let the, you have the, closing thoughts. Yeah, closing thoughts. The app is three dollars. It's it, that's it. It's no big risk. Go read the reviews. Okay, uh, the the reviews will will convince you. There is a subscription which is eleven dollars a year if you want to be able to message other flat earthers. Um, use the weather app in there and um, fill out profiles. If you want to view other people's profiles, you have to be a subscriber, $11 for the year. You're buying me a margarita and you're forgetting to tip the bartender. Okay. And, and that's it, but you don't have to, you know, you just get the app. And if you don't want to communicate, just watch it, watch the daily video every day for a couple of weeks, send me your proof of the globe when you're two Bitcoins, but it's not going to three Bitcoins, not going to happen because the earth isn't a globe. And what happens is I'm tricking you to doing some research to try to win money and then you'll end up being a flat earther. And you'll thank me for it in the end after you cry yourself to sleep for a few weeks. All right. So all of my links, all of my YouTube channels, all my interviews and the app itself um, can be found at flatearthdave.com. Flatearthdave.com. It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Nobody will remember that after the show ends. So flatearthdave.com. It's all there. Yep. For those of you who are young enough and know how to use these uh, cell phones, which I'm actually pretty bad with them, uh, you can scan that QR code and, and download it directly. Yep. Uh, thank you, Dave. I, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to go in and upload this thing tonight because I know a lot of people are excited about seeing it. I did get the questions everyone asked, so don't give me crap in the chat room if you didn't look at this later. Thank you, Dave. We'll see you. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to bring you back on again and recap this sometime and, and go through new discoveries. 
Cool. Send me a link when it's up and I'll, I'll put it on the app under the interviews button. I will, man. Thank you. Yeah. I'll right, we'll, uh, see you again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.